welcome to our online Sunday morning meeting. It is good that we can all join together in worship. Some of our young people are taking part in this service and we hope that you will enjoy the items and be blessed by what you see and hear. I look forward to seeing you all. Bye.
Seven.
One day was billed as Freedom Day in England, the day when uh, the regulations that have governed our lives for so many months now were finally lifted. I'm sure that someone in government thought that um, calling it Freedom Day was a good idea, a very sort of catchy kind of title, but I'm not sure it was a wise choice of language or even particularly accurate. It's a strange kind of freedom, isn't it, at the moment? And many of us aren't quite sure what to do. There are those who are quite happy to throw caution to the wind and we will all have seen the images on TV of people in large gatherings, indoors and outdoors, but there are still many others who are really frightened by the current situation. And what about people who've been shielding? When is it Freedom Day for them? Because that certainly hasn't arrived yet. I suspect that um, as the uh, infection rates continue to grow, anxiety will remain in the country and mental health problems as a result of the pandemic will, will be with us for a long time to come. There's a real sense of weariness isn't there amongst individuals and the nation as a whole because we've carried a heavy burden for a long long time. Thankfully vaccines are helping to lift that burden and with their reassurance, there are those who will find their own ways and explore the new freedoms and find some relief from what has happened to us over the last year or so. In Matthew, Jesus suggests a way for people to work through their burdens and anxieties, and that is by turning to him. Here is what Jesus has to say. Come to me, all you are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's a beautiful line, isn't it? And you will find rest for your souls. Who wouldn't want that? I don't think that necessarily means that Jesus is saying that um, it will take us out of frightening situations. It will make the bad things go away to make burdens disappear overnight. Now, what he's saying is come to me and find peace and rest amid the difficulties, whatever they might be. As I was preparing for this short talk, an example, uh, an illustration came to mind that I thought would be useful to share. I hesitated because it's um, so personal to me. But after giving it a bit of thought, I decided I would go for it and make of it what you will. I know that um, some of you will know that um, I was ill in the early part of the years having caught COVID and uh, I was hospitalised for some time. I spent um, four weeks in intensive care um, but after that on a lovely sunny Saturday morning as I remember it um, I was told by um, one of the doctors at the Queen's Medical Centre that I was going to be transferred from intensive care there to the highly dependency unit at the city hospital. When I heard that, I was initially really pleased because I thought this is a step down. I'm moving in the right direction. I'm getting better. This thing is going to be over soon and I'll be back home. I foolishly thought that being transferred would be a simple operation and that um, a couple of folk could lift me off the bed and pop me in a wheelchair, wheel me down to some waiting hospital transport. And uh, next thing you know, I'll be on the ring road and heading for the city hospital. Um, instead, what unfolded was more like um, a scene from Casualty, where um, a team of people appeared and um, slid me off the bed onto a trolley and uh, wheeled me through the hospital to a waiting uh, emergency ambulance. Uh, my sense of alarm grew when um, two doctors got into the ambulance with me and had various bits of equipment with them as well. The situation wasn't helped because I'd previously overheard someone uh, call me delicate, which is not something many people have ever said about me. But it made me did make me think, mm, this is not quite as straightforward as it seems. And uh, as I was lying there on the trolley, the thought came to me that um, they thought I was poorly enough to need two doctors in the ambulance with me for a three mile trip. And I felt sort of a growing uh, anxiety and uh, trepidation about the situation. But then one of the doctors, I don't know whether he sensed it in me or whether he was just a good good sort anyway, but um, he leaned over and uh, took hold of my hand and uh, said something to me that um, 
I will never forget. He said, don't worry, Richard, we've got you. And all I could say to that was thank you. And he said, there's no need to thank us. It's what we do. And it's our absolute privilege to do it. We've got you. He couldn't have said a better thing at that moment. And it gave me a real sense of reassurance and my calm and peace returned. I wasn't taken out of the situation. I was still poorly. I was still in an ambulance with its blue lights on heading down the ring road. But I knew that um, right beside me, literally right beside me, there was someone there who was going to do everything they could to make sure that I would be all right. And I think in essence, that is what Jesus does. He says to us, don't worry, I've got you. Now, you could write a long sermon, couldn't you, about those two verses that I read from the Bible earlier. And this is only really a thought for the day. I'm just scratching the surface of it. But I think that Jesus says, come to me with your hopes and fears, worries, anxieties about the pandemic, and I will carry them with you. They won't necessarily disappear, but we'll have the reassurance that he is there right beside you waiting to help. Constant, faithful, our unfailing friend. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Now, I've just had a bit of late breaking news in and it's worth sharing with you because the Memorial Hall's Band and Songsters are featuring on Fortress Radio on Sunday, the 8th of August at 6 p.m. The station will be playing a selection of tracks from CDs previously recorded by the Band and Songsters, so it will be well worth listening to. So why don't you tune into that? Thank you.
Shall we pray together? Lord, thank you that although we are still living in strange times and unable to meet in our usual ways due to the pandemic, that we are still able to worship you together in some way. In amidst the uncertainty and doubt of things going back to some form of normal, help us to remember to come to you with our worries and fears, for you will share our burdens and give us real rest. Help us to see you at work in our lives and know that your love will sustain us. Amen. I hope you have enjoyed the service. Here are the announcements. Kevin Pallister has told me that I will get the job permanently if I score more than an 8 out of 10. I need to report that the funeral service for Eileen Walker will take place on Monday the 26th of July at Wolford Hill. Pray for all of those who need care and support through illnesses, bereavement and other struggles just now. There will be online ministry on Sunday the 1st of August 2021. And there will also be a gathering at the hall at 10.30 a.m. led by Majors Robert and Julia. All are welcome, but do let Majors or Sharon Page know if you attend to go. Please support and enjoy the meetings at the hall. They are informal and a good way to meet up again in a safe way. On Sunday, the 8th of August, there will not be an online service. However, there will be a gathering at the hall led by Kevin because the majors will be on leave. Please watch out for other communications about people and activities through email and post. We really look forward to returning to worship as we join together more in September, but pray for caution, patience, and staying well at this time. <laughs>